you're in good hands with all of state already up at the microphone here's head coach brent venables all right good morning uh going back and having a chance to uh, rewind the, the tape and uh, look at everything uh, offensively defensively and the kicking game obviously it's incredibly uh, disappointing uh frustrating uh to uh to have played the the way we did in, in that game um, first half uh, filled with a lot of opportunity uh, to uh, keep it a really competitive game going into halftime. Uh, we talked about that uh, just after the game, and um, the, uh, I look at certainly uh, that game, and I look at you know the body of work as a whole uh, on the season and where where we're at. You know, just finishing that game, being halfway through the the regular season, um, not playing winning uh, football uh, on offense. Um, playing, you know, giving ourselves a chance to win in, in special teams and, uh, and, and playing well uh, on defense, uh, really for the most part, to give us a chance to win every game. And so obviously looking, uh, you know, again, where, where, are we, uh, where are we falling short, you know, in, uh, on offense, uh, what exactly was the root of the, the different issues? And there's certainly a lot of different areas. Um, Look back at uh, at this particular game, and and uh, uh, obviously uh, you, you, you go right to um, things that matter the most, things that impact the game. And we talked about it going into the game. Uh, you know, nothing impacts a game like turnovers, and certainly that was a, a factor in the first half. Uh, and then, you know, uh, running the football, uh, being able to run it. I thought they're uh, overall, um, you know, they they were more explosive than we were in running the football. Uh, but when you, you look at all the efficiency uh, pieces of it, uh, when we ran the football, we were actually a, a very efficient football team. And, uh, but we weren't explosive. And that's a, a big difference. And I thought the explosive plays, uh, the turnover, uh, were really a difference uh, in the game. And, uh, and our inability to create them on offense and sustain drives uh, and their ability to, uh, you know, create the explosive plays. You know, they had to, um, a long drive to, to score first, uh, I think maybe a 12 play drive, and then uh, uh, a four play drive uh, created by explosives, and then a one play drive uh, for a touchdown to make it 21 uh, to three. So uh, again, looking back at, um, uh, you know, there's always, uh, good and bad and, and all of it. You got to find things that you can promote, uh, whether that's effort or execution or, uh, you know, physicality or creating plays uh, on either side of the ball, uh, doing the things that are necessary in order to win. And certainly uh, you got to, there's plenty of mistakes. Uh, you know, and when you, when you fail, that's the best opportunity to teach and you learn. And uh, this was, um, you know, uh, a lot to learn from, uh, to say the least. And uh, but I think eight of our uh, 13 drives on offense, we we did create some momentum early in the drives, and uh, just not enough. And uh, so you go back and you look at what what was. And I think right now uh, for several guys on offense, things are happening really fast. And again, you in our two losses, you know, we lost to the number one team in the country and. Uh, maybe number six team in the country. So everything's going to happen even faster for them uh, as, as new players. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the different issues, um, and I look at, okay, are we, in a, are we in a bad call based on what we're seeing on, on the other side of the ball? Do we give ourselves a, a chance to be successful by, by play design and what we're asking guys to do, whether that's protection or that's blocking or uh, where we're trying to, you know, run the football or throw the football? I look at um, what are the opportunities that are actually there um, uh, within the play, and uh, in you know, what are we asking of guys? Is it too much or not? And so, uh, you know, you know the opportunities um, when when you look at uh, uh, throwing the football, uh, we had uh, plenty of opportunities in the first drive uh, of the game. After getting the first down, uh, we've. We're open. We're behind the defender, and we we just overthrow it. You know, we uh, don't catch it in the end zone. We uh, attack vertically. And then there's a there's always a pros and cons with that too. You know, you want to try to stay on time and stay on schedule and stay ahead of the chains. And so when you take 
shots down the field. Uh, you like your matchup. You like your coverage. Uh, you like, um, you know, uh, where you're at on the field. And uh, but you got to live and die with that too. You know, connect, and then you're you're at second and ten. And and uh, but we had our opportunity there in the first drive and uh, to do that, and we just uh, missed throw it uh, there uh, in the end zone. And uh, uh, our second drive of the game. Uh, again, again, started off with another really efficient uh, run, and uh, you know, and then we get to we, we take a sack on on second down. They got a blitz, and we can't do that. So, uh, you know, we we've got to um, throw the ball away there and stay in again a manageable third down uh, situation. Um, and then our third drive, we get we get things going there, and uh, we get three first downs and. Uh, but we miss some opportunities within the drive. You know, there's there's plenty of opportunities, uh, but we got a slant round open on third and six. We got to hit him, and uh, again, well designed play, uh, and it's going to be tight coverage. And uh, but uh, we're we, we got to make those plays, and we had to settle for a field goal. And I could I could go down you know every drive uh, the same way. And there's times when uh, you know they they make a good play on defense. They're in a good structure. Um, there's times we, you know, our pass pro isn't what it needs to be and we give up some leakage or we have some issues with route detail way too often. Uh, and the quarterback early in some of these drives, he's counting on the receiver to break back at, you know, uh, 10 to 12 yards and we're at 16. That's an issue. You know, you're squeezing the ball, you're not in a rhythm and and uh, you got missed throws and things of that nature. So, uh, you know, that, you know, also uh, is an issue or again, some of the footwork on some of the, the runs or, uh, you, know, you know, where exactly, um, you know, we're gonna run the ball and some of the footwork early in the, some of the, uh, you know, the action uh, needs to be cleaned up. So uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, we gotta score touchdowns. We gotta find ways to get the ball in the end zone and we're not doing that right now. Uh, and that's a problem. And uh, so, you know, there's, there's fundamental issues, there's decision-making issues we got to get it all cleaned up. You know, none of it's uh, any good. None of it's, uh, nobody wants to hear it. You got 6,000 excuses and none of them are any good, but the opportunities aren't endless. And when we have the opportunities, again, that's what I look at. Are there opportunities there? And uh, so we spent a good time of our meeting uh, yesterday with the players and showing them, you know, where, again, guys are wide open. Uh, you know, the coverage is what we want. You know, the opportunities are there. It's not always on the quarterback. Sometimes it's on the, again, uh, the receiver, the tight end. Um, maybe it's some of the protection, but again, overall protection was solid uh, on the day. And again, our pass pro, I'm not talking about early down, quick game and uh, play action things, but the overall pass pro has got to still be better. Um, certainly there was a few drives with penalties and those are, uh, those are always a killer, you know, whether they're false starts or uh, holding penalties. Uh, we had a couple, uh, we had a drive late that we had a couple of penalties, but most of the time it's, they're hard to overcome, especially right now. Uh, but everyone's got to have ownership, uh, starting again uh, with the coaching staff. Uh, if the opportunities aren't there and it's dysfunctional and we're not scoring, that's a problem. If the opportunities are there and there's several of them that are there, uh, you know, then, you know, then, uh, you know, we got to execute better. And this is a game of, uh, you know, a timing and precision and execution, and we got to get more precise. Uh, obviously, uh, for several guys, this is the uh, first, uh, second game, you know, uh, with, with Mike and the crew that he's got, the second game together, a uh, full game, and no excuses. We got to be better. And um, uh, if you don't play well in the SEC, you know, you're going to lose. And uh, we gotta we gotta play well and play well together, play well efficiently, and uh, so got a lot of work to do, um, a lot of uh, things that we have to get cleaned up, things to learn from. Uh, uh, I, again, the things that are uh, uh, that we're capable and the things that we can control that we can get better. Some of the decision making: do I do I keep it or do I run it? And there's several of those that aren't the same play. Uh, you know, several times we, you know, we didn't make the right decision. And so um, we've got to keep it simple uh, that way. And it was, you know, we got to make it simple, don't overcomplicate it and get out of our own way. And when we do, uh, we'll be successful. So um, with that, uh, I'll open it up. Brent Bailey. Brent, we are at the midpoint of the season. And Seth did talk a little bit after the 
get into the game without putting players in better position mm -hmm. to make plays and trying to get into that rhythm. You just described a lot of the things about execution and things like this, but yeah. is it concerning as a head coach that we are entering game seven and that the players aren't executing at a level where maybe you expected hitting the back end of the season? Is that, and Seth, to his credit, is taking accountability and accepting all responsibility, but is it concerning as a head coach that it isn't where you probably thought it would be entering the second half of the season? Well, certainly, I mean, you get there's your, your perspective is, you know, you got a, a brand new quarterback in there, too. And they just started his second game and, uh, you know, his first action was against the number six team in the country. And, uh, you know, his second start, you know, was against the number one team in the country. So they've got to have, you know, perspective on all of it and not be uh, quick to judge and, and have the eye for, for what it is. And uh, again, as I go back, uh, where the opportunities there are guys wide open. Yeah, several times wide open. Is the protection there when they're wide open? Yep, it sure was. Do we gotta pull the trigger? Yeah, we do. And uh, do we gotta get better with our route detail? We do. Um, and that's, you know, the, there's a coaching piece to that. You know, what you put on the field is a reflection of what you're coached. And then at the same time, you know, we gotta take what we practice, what we did right in practice, and we gotta take it to game day. We can't lose our mind. And too often uh, that happens as well. And and all of it matters when you're talking about being efficient, uh, creating explosive plays and things of that nature, getting everybody on the same page. And, uh, you know, it's incredibly uh, concerning and disappointing and frustrating, all of it. And I do know just, again, as a coach, there's a fine line uh, between uh, being successful and not being successful on any particular given play and a lot of uh, moving parts that go into that. But at the end of the day, you either are or you aren't. And uh, we haven't been enough, and uh, and you know that's incredibly uh, frustrating to say the least. Mm -hmm. Ryan Abrams, yeah, Brent, I'm gonna ask you something a little bit different. Uh, I don't know if you saw the end of the Ohio State Oregon game, what uh, Dan Lanning did on the defense, throwing a, a 12th guy out there for a, for a late uh, play. As a defensive guy, what do you think about that? What do you think about the rule? I think it's just a matter of time before they go back and change the rule. <laughs> Uh, but it was good, you know. I say it's good. I'm, a, you know, from a defensive perspective, it was it's good. Any, have you ever had anything like that where you had a you know idea about a rule that maybe a lot of people didn't know about that you found a way to exploit defensively? Uh, not that I can recall. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yep. Brent, a second ago you said you got to take what you have in practice to the field. Yeah. When it comes to offense, are you what are you seeing? Are you seeing those explosive plays? Are you seeing those open receivers hit in practice and that's not translating, or are there struggles in practice that are then magnified? Well, there's a, there's always struggles in practice, um, and uh, but again, as far as connecting on deep balls and explosives and and it looked good uh, in practice, yeah. And then there's time again they're going. We we do all a lot of good on good. Uh, as well, and it's always a mixed bag. Um, and again, the defense uh, has had a lot of success, and the offense has had success as well. And then again, there, there's a scout team a piece of it. And what kind of look are you getting with the scout team? And you know, my challenge always is to make you know I'm coaching the scout team, the defensive scout team that's giving the offense a look. I'm coaching them as hard as I'm coaching uh, anybody uh, to give a good look to get the people that they're going against every day to get those guys to strain so that on game day, they're not surprised. And uh, so there's always that competitive balance, uh, you know, of getting your scout work and also getting the opponent look, getting good on good work. And uh, we, you know, we've eliminated a period of scout work and have kept it good on good, added a good on good period uh, several weeks ago, just to continue to uh, strain and try to get guys better uh, you know, faster. And, uh, but there's a, there's a balance of it. And, and when you, when you go good on good, it's a very competitive environment. And so with that can come potential, uh, you know, in injuries and things of that nature. And then at the end of the day, you know, you want to get your opponent looks down and things of that nature as well. Great. Yeah, Brent, what's your general philosophy on mid season staff changes? Um, again, I've, if I, you know, you, you go back and look at where I've been, I've not been a part of any staff changes 
in the middle of the season uh, with Bill Schneider, uh, Bob Stoops, or uh, at uh, Clemson with Dabo. And, uh, you know, uh, there's always problems. Sometimes people know about them, sometimes they don't. Uh, there's always uh, some level of struggle and you got to work through your problems, find the best possible solutions. And if you have success, it's everybody. And sometimes when you, you don't have success, people want to point to one guy. And sometimes it's probably um, uh, appropriate to, to blame one person. Uh, but most of the time it's not. It's a it's a combination of a lot of things while you're uh, while, while you're struggling. And uh, and so, again, you try to put it all together and have a perspective. Uh, not make any, uh, you know, uh, rash decisions based on the information that you have. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, there, there's nothing easy about any of it. And uh, but I I've I've been a part of uh, those staffs, too, where maybe at the end of the year decisions were made, uh, you know, at the end of the year, but uh, nothing midseason. Well, again, I know that the, the, we just need to execute. Never, that's not really uh, satisfying for for anybody, and I get that. Um, I look at again, we got to become more explosive, and we got to make plays that are there. And that's well, I go back: is it there? Is they have a, the, the best defense against what we're doing every snap? Then we got to figure out, you know, better ways to scheme. If, if we're in good calls against what the defense is presenting and there are issues uh, with, uh, again, details of what we're doing uh, based on what I know we're coaching them to do, um, again, where there's got to be some player accountability as well. So I asked the players yesterday, we're going through plays. I'm like, so did the coach tell you to do this this way or not? And like, no, I was told to do it. I said, well, then that's your responsibility. Take that to game day. You know, there's, there's, you know, I said, I can I'll run over your coaches, throw them under the bus all you want me to, you know, uh, if, if you think that's appropriate, you know, and I, you know, that you got to be uh, open and honest and a coach has got to own it when, when they screw up. Uh, and there's plenty of that. And then the players got to have responsibility too. Are you spending the extra time to have your details down when you get in the moment and the game's going fast to be able to, you know, execute at a high level. And, uh, again, if that's blocking somebody the right way, if that's, running, uh, you know, a route with the, with the right detail. If that's uh, the quarterback going through, you know, looking from a progression standpoint, you know, putting his eyes where they need to, trusting what he's seeing, trusting the protection, not getting in a, a hurry. And uh, as I said earlier, I think right now, uh, there's a handful of guys that are playing really fast, which is not a good thing, you know, too fast. And got to have some trust and some patience uh, with uh, some of that, but that's the first thing I look at. I look at it from a lens of what are we asking them to do? What are they seeing? Are we in a good call, uh, a good structured call versus what we're seeing? And I look for overall uh, efficiency. And I think, um, I think as far as the efficiency in, in the plays, I think uh, you look at uh, the analytics or I think they had uh, successful plays um, overall in the game. Again, Texas had 24 successful efficiency plays. We had 20, 25. And, um, and so I look at that and, you know, I, I look at, well, the explosive plays, uh, you know, we weren't able to match them with the explosive plays. They had six. We didn't. Uh, they won the turnover battle. Uh, you know, they won the rushing total. And part of that was in some of the explosive runs. Uh, and then the field position in the second half was crap. Uh, so we couldn't we couldn't flip it, and then on, on third and long and extra long, uh, they were able to convert a few, and we weren't our third and medium uh, was was not good. Theirs was better than ours, and that's the game. And uh, you know, and so uh, I, I look at all of it, and, uh, and and again, we we had our, our best game when it comes to consider the you know what we're going against uh, efficiency wise, and in, in our runs we had again several drives that were started with really successful plays uh, and uh, we just we didn't sustain it obviously and uh, and so that's always a concern uh, you got to not only move the ball you need to score and create explosive plays and we're not doing uh, either of those like we need to right now Brent, Brent, 
really good taking care of the football in the passing game. But as you mentioned, some of those opportunities for some of those tight windows, how do you mm-hmm. balance with a really good quarterback being more aggressive in those spots without being reckless and still not taking care of the football? Well, again, um, and, and Mike, for you know, for example, in the second half, uh, he had a couple of really nice uh, throws uh, over the middle, tight coverage, uh, bang bang kind of plays. Uh, he did that in the first half uh, early, uh, and there's sometimes when you you don't trust it, and that's just part of the maturation. You you, you don't want that. Uh, when you go back and you you freeze the picture and you show them what's there, and and then you develop that through practice and the confidence that comes with it, and everybody's got to be on the same page. Uh, and, and again, you, you go back and like I said, you, you show them the ones that, Hey, that were good. And then you say, Hey, these are the ones that are there. And we, you, you match them up with maybe what we did in practice. You know, uh, there were eight plays that Texas was successful with their offense, uh, same formation, same play. And there was eight of them on defense. We, we practiced that exact play, that hash, that motion, uh, that formation, uh, with that exact call and we didn't execute. And so you try to show the players that you do, you do that to, to create um, affirmation uh, that you're being shown the right things. Uh, you know, you got to execute uh, the things that you, you know are going to be successful uh, when you get on the field uh, with the call, you're in a good position to be successful. Now you got to go, you got to go play. And uh, so you, you find all different types of ways and then you go back and you, you put those plays uh, into that next practice too. And uh, you try to build the confidence, uh, continuity, cohesion, the timing, all of those things. Uh, by the way, we're going to go right back at it again. You know, you hit it head on uh, as much as anything. Back in the middle, James. You know, Brett, the six games you've had a chance to see Michael and Jackson, four games, and uh, they watched two games. And you know, Casey's got a bunch of starts, but you haven't engaged him yet. What's your overall general thought of what you got in the quarterback room? And, what do you think of the future of that room? That we're yeah, I love what we have in the quarterback room. Uh, you know, incredibly talented uh, group, uh, inexperienced group um, with, again, the first two guys that you mentioned there. Uh, but they got great talent, great futures, and uh, we need to be able to uh, play winning football, put them in position to, uh, and, you know, help them be successful. And uh, But you yeah, completely and totally believe in them. Um, uh, and, you know, I trust them, and and I believe that again they got their head down. They have humility. They got work ethic. Uh, they got great leadership qualities. All the things that you want. Arm talent. You know, uh, you know both of them are to me the total package, and uh, all their best football still in front of them. Yeah, Brent, what's your philosophy on playing two two quarterbacks and they're in the same game? You know, the old adage is you have two quarterbacks, you have zero. But would you ever go like? Mike goes this series and Jackson goes this series. What's your thought on that? Well, I'm certainly not immune to uh, uh, to anything. And, you know, I know Steve Spurrier did it, you know, for his whole career. Um, but that being said, uh, you know, it'd be great if you had one that you could, uh, you know, you could uh, get behind and, and do the things that are necessary in order to win. And uh, so um, would certainly not you know, put it out of the realm of possibility, you know, in the future. So, Brent, you talked about the, the, the running back room a little bit to, and how they played against Texas. Maybe through six weeks when you've had some good moments and maybe some drops, uh, generating consistent production in the running back room. Just how do you maybe evaluate where that room is? Again, I think this was one of our best games. I consider who we're playing. And, and again, there are several plays that were there. If we hand the ball off, we're going to get substantial yards. And, uh, so I put that into that's not their fault. You know, that's uh, we, we got to make better decisions and, uh, and they're easy decisions. They're not complicated. And uh, but we had, again, uh, several drive starters uh, that were were really, really good and a second down plays that were really good uh, as well. So I think they're doing the things that we are, we've asked of them. Uh, we, we haven't uh, made a lot of second and third level guys miss. Uh, you know, uh, Taylor Tatum had a, a nice run. He had poor footwork on the run and poor angle where he f- initially started to run the football. And then we fumbled the ball after, uh, you know, a 10, 12 yard uh, gain there. And, uh, and that was, that was one of the, the runs that was probably, uh, uh, despite the, the fumble, 
that you, you're most critical of. Hey, we got a, a better footwork, better angle, better um, a launching point as far as where, what, what's the aiming point here? Who are we following? Uh, but he made something, you know, he, he, uh, he was able to make something out of it uh, until the end. But uh, I thought that was, again, um, our best game when it comes to uh, doing the things that we asked them to do. Well, and you mentioned, uh, Taylor, when you've got a guy that's shown some explosiveness like that, but yeah. show, also shows some areas where he needs to grow as a true freshman. How do you balance maybe trying to get the best of what he showed, but also with Again, we, 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 we put him back in, you know. Uh, he's got tremendous talent, you know, and that was as soon as he fumbled, I said, hey, man, don't bury this guy. And the coach Murray was on the same page, you know. Uh, that was a, those are those are terrible timing, terrible things to have happen. That's how you lose games. But uh, there's there's too much talent. Uh, he's an incredibly competitive kid. He's tough minded. He's a, a guy that bounces back quickly through adversity, and and a guy that you know we uh, completely believe in. Mm -hmm. Brent, uh, Troy got on the field for the first time. Mm -hmm. He did some uh, really good things. Uh, he's tough. He's competitive. He's a leader. Uh, he's a he's a loud leader. Uh, one of the loudest guys we got out there. Uh, he loves to play, uh, and uh, he did some good, really good things. Yeah, he'll continue to play more. Mm -hmm. Brent, kind of the same thing with Hassan. What did you think of seeing his first action out there on Saturday? Yeah, it was good. Uh, again, it's been a long time. Uh, last time that he was out there. Uh, with his teammates was uh, out here on the track field uh, in July. And uh, uh, and I'm just saying for, you know, back and healthy and those types of things. And so it was good to get him back out there with the guys and get him into a rhythm of how to play. And uh, there were some that was things that he did was, was really good and some things to learn from. But, uh, you know, we're going to need him. Brent, uh, given what's – Kind of the current state of college football and how things are always evolving with Jackson playing only the four games. Is there has there been any discussion about him possibly taking the rest of the year as a red shirt, or you know just maybe he, he gets in there in case of injury? Has that been discussed at all? Um, it, it's been discussed between us. Um, you know, you know what was told to Jackson: we put you in. It's because we need you to help us go win. And uh, you know we're uh, we're certainly sensitive to to everything. Uh, we're not uh, sitting here with a, our head in the sand or naive to what it is. But man, he's a great teammate. He wants to he wants to be the starting quarterback at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, his focus and his priority is with the team uh, where he is right now. He's practiced extremely well the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I feel that it, it's only right to give. Uh, Mike, the opportunity uh, to be the quarterback and to have, again, a, a, a body of work, you know, that says he's either is or isn't the right guy. And uh, what he learned from, you know, his past mistakes every week is a season of its own. As we know, every opponent's going to present different issues and problems. Uh, every week that you play offense or defense, uh, the kicking game, you, there's always a different, um, there's some DNA that you're going to do that uh, is always going to be the same. Uh, things that you can hang your hat on, and then there's always you got a game plan, and uh, and so you want to give guys an opportunity to show how well they can uh, quickly they can pick up those things and execute them on game day, things of that nature. So, uh, you know, Jackson's been fantastic, uh, all things considered. Uh, you know, he's taken it uh, in a really tough-minded way, and uh, and he's ready to play. And if he wasn't, he wouldn't still be here every day. And, uh, you know, that would be the same with you know, we got a handful of receivers that are dying to play uh, that, you know, if if they can't make it back from a health standpoint, uh, they have every intention of being here. Uh, they're at practice every day. Uh, you know, you know, Dion's hoping to play this week. You know, he wants to uh, defy all odds and, and be ready to play this week, you know, and uh, uh, he got up to 80 percent of, you know, his max volume yesterday. And these guys are working relentlessly to put themselves in position uh, to help us this year. Uh, but, but Jackson, like I said, he's, um, you know, he hasn't, he's had a very mature uh, mindset with everything. John, over to you have a question. Yeah, it is, thank you. Um, Brent, take you back a little bit, something a little bit different. Uh, 
2005 season, 2009 season. Uh, not ideal here for you guys, obviously not the standard. But I have to be on the field for both of those bowl games at mm -hmm. the end of the season. Yeah. And that was as happy as I can ever remember seeing you after a game. All right, so you guys made a play to win the game at both, both those games. And you were jumping around and you were having a good time. Is there any lessons to be drawn from those oh, games yeah. for you to impart to this team this year in that there's a ton of joy, there's coming together as a team, there's all kinds of stuff going on that you can do uh, to have rewards for this season? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, great point. And it, yeah, it's, if it was rewarding for me uh, as a coach, uh, you should ask the players that were part of it too. Uh, great resource. And I've had several conversations with several guys and – and other coaches that were a part of those staff. Some, uh, sometimes when you have to overcome a lot, uh, when things are stacked against you for whatever reason, uh, and it galvanizes you, there's a real improvement. Uh, there's a real focused passion and movement that you can, uh, you know, that you can feel and uh, lock arms with, and one. Uh, series at a time, one quarter at a time, one game at a time, you can feel it just moving, you know, with the purity that you want it to, you know, let's focus where your feet are, you know, let's, let's put everything you got into this moment right here, this week, this game, you know, a season of one, a best of one mindset, uh, you know, win the day, you know, go one and know this week, all those things. And some seasons it's easier to do that than others. And that's always been the challenge of coaching. Can you, uh, you know, again, success is the worst teacher. Um, failure is one of the best opportunities to learn, to grow, to teach, and to get guys to buy in, to create humility that sometimes guys need uh, to, to earn the respect of what it takes to be successful. It's the smallest things, not the big things. It's the smallest things that all add up uh, that in the end make a difference, uh, good or bad. And uh, the margin between being successful and not being successful is incredibly small. And so those seasons were a great example of that. And uh, as we know, we had a, a bunch of freshmen uh, in 2005 had come uh, come off of back-to-back -back appearances in the national championship and uh, several guys uh, going to the NFL and back-to-back -back classes and uh, a lot of youth, a lot of inexperience, a lot of first-time guys. And uh, we had, I think in 2005, we opened the year, lost a three-point game maybe to TCU and uh, maybe we were two and three to start the year and then uh, finished with a, a really good win against uh, University of Oregon. Well, we pick them off on the wheel route, Clint Ingram. Uh, and uh, again, an Oregon team that was ranked sixth, that in their mind they were screwed and had to play us in the holiday ball, but they were really an excellent team. And uh, so we beat them in, in that game in then 2009 where we lost the opener. I think we lost three one-point games, including the opener 14-13 to BYU. And, lost Sam and maybe Trent Williams and Jermaine Gresham. Uh, and those are and, yeah, Brody. Brody Eldridge and one of our best leaders. And um, we find a way and then we uh, we come back and we, we play in the, in the Sun Bowl. And uh, and I'm, I'm going to be respectful. Uh, uh, but first time in El Paso, great hospitality. And um, uh, my daughter was born when I wasn't there. Uh, I remember it for that. That was one thing. I always take it back to the wins and the losses too. But my, my, my daughter Addie was born on the day we were at practice. I was at practice. It was snowing with the sun out. And uh, so I FaceTimed uh, with um, somebody, one of our close family friends while I watched my, and I'm embarrassed to say it too. But she came early. Julie couldn't come on the trip for doctor's orders and the baby came early. But we won the game. We played early. And uh, Toby Gerhardt, you know, a Heisman guy and a really good Stanford team. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, uh, which helps too. Uh, it kind of added sweetness to, to the victory. And, um, but um, we, we, we took our, for that game, and this was came from Keenan Clayton the day after the Stanford was announced for the bowl game. Keenan was our, our cheetah and a former high school safety. And Keenan was 6'2", 210. And, but he immediately, they played a lot of 14 personnel, one tight or um, uh, four tight ends and one back or three tight ends and, you know, one back and uh, personnel groups were really big. And he says, hey, coach, you know, I played safety in high school, you know, at Sulphur Springs down in Texas. And 
and that, that was a Sunday right after we announced and immediately I was like, you know, what, what would it let's take our sandbackers and we put them at safety. Um, let's take our defensive ends and put them at sandbackers. Let's take our defensive tackles and play them at, at, at uh, you know, at, at defensive end. And, and, uh, and so we, we constructed that we played, played Jerry McCoy at five technique. We played um, our defensive ends like Jeremy Beal. Uh, we played him at Sam linebacker. And because what Stanford was doing, they were taking 310 pound tight ends and they were or tackles and putting them at tight end in a number 88 Jersey and setting edges and destroying people, you know, in the run game in their play passes. And, and so we did that. Uh, we won the game in a really brutal slug fest. And, uh, but to your point, uh, we had to overcome a lot and we had to think outside the box. Uh, we had to get better uh, as the season went on. Uh, certainly nothing was perfect, but man, it was so pure, so good. And those were two of my funnest seasons uh, that I've coached. Uh, the 14 season I was at Clemson, uh, it was the same. We lost our quarterback, our, our backup quarterback, five-star quarterback towards ACL, Deshaun Watson. And we had our, our third team quarterback end up uh, playing, you know, in the bowl game was the MVP. And we were led by, a, a you know, a veteran defense. We had eight seniors and things of that nature and, and finished the way in a, in a non New Year's Eve bowl game that, you know, against a really good opponent, you know, that we're able to win. And, and you just said, you know what, I know it wasn't what we wanted ultimately, but man, it was satisfying under the circumstances. And we did the best with what we got. And you always hope that. And, uh, you know, again, as I've said, when you look at our schedule, it's going to, there's nothing easy about it, um, but there's nothing that's on the schedule that says that we can't win every game and we have to get better. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, play to our potential, uh, particularly in the areas where it's most important. And, uh, and, you know, like the defense the other day, the defense, we played really well. And, um, but we needed to play a little better in the right spots. We need to tackle a little better. You know, they made some plays. They made an explosive play, a 30 yard play right on the sideline. He tippy toes, they review it. They gave it to him. That's the game. They fumble in the end zone. We play a little bit harder all the way through the end. You know, we recover that. That could have changed the whole game. And that was my point, bringing it up last night, you know, where can we be better? And that's what our responsibility is as coaches to find the places that we can be better, put it in front of the guys, appeal to their voice of reason, give them to buy in and go right back to work and to keep the hunger, the humility, uh, the respect for what it takes, not all of us, you know, taking responsibility and, and go get better. And that's the only way you're going to get, but you're not going to accidentally get better. You're not going to get better by uh, getting rid of everybody that makes mistakes or that aren't playing to their potential or coaching to their potential. You, you get better by, by owning it uh, and putting each other in position to be successful and then go and execute and uh, uh, doing the best with what we got. And to me, that's what true courage is, is this, despite whatever the result is, you go right back at it and you put everything you got into this moment into this week. How do you come back after a disappointing loss and all that? To me, it's, uh, it takes real courage. It takes real strong men. And, and, uh, it's, you know, it's got to start with me and to, to put everything you got and go right back at it. Don't ignore it and just say, hey, all right, let's just flush it. You know, I don't think that's appropriate. Has there ever been a, a moment where you've had a, a disgusting moment? Hey, let's just flush this, and flush this and move on. Yeah. Not this year. And uh, too much to learn from too many guys that have that haven't that haven't been there, done that. And uh, that uh, that, you know, this is a great opportunity to teach and grow. And and that's a vision that you have. And let's see where we're at at the end of the year. And uh, you hope to be able to do exactly what you're talking about. Thank you. Two more quick ones. Colton Telling and then James Jack. Brent, uh, with all the injuries in the receivers room, you talked about needing guys to step up. How encouraging was it from a developmental standpoint to see Zion here and you take some strides in the Texas game? Yeah, I think he had five catches. Three of them were first down. Um, it was it's great. And then again, that's after having done uh, you know some good things uh, in the last outing as well. And he's been showing the progress uh, at practice. He's actually really shown up in the special teams as well. And that's a challenge. I challenge a lot of guys. Hey, look, the more you um, earn your way on special teams, it will bleed over in, into what you're doing, you know, on, at your position on offense or defense. And uh, so value your role, you know, make the most of your role, make the most of your opportunity. And uh, and he's done that. And you see real growth and improvement. You know, Ivan Carrion got in there and made a catch in there late. And again, uh, you know, Braggins, you know, he's a he's tough as all get out. He's going to make the improvement. It's there. And he's got to get a little more detailed. 
he's had some real opportunities and I really expect him to, to capitalize on that because he's tough. He's a hard worker. Uh, he really cares and just he's, he's got to get a little bit more detail. But a lot of those young guys, you know, we're, we're counting on. South Carolina's played some really close games with some, some really good opponents. Yeah. What, are, what are you seeing from them or from, from the tendencies that they have? Well, again, going into the year, I think, you know, I said that at some point in time that I felt they were one of the more undervalued teams looking at the teams that were on our schedule based on what they had coming back, uh, what they had recruited, uh, you know, wh where they were as a, as a football team uh, coming out of, out of the spring. And then uh, I know they had a rough start in their first – their opener uh, they, against ODU. But uh, other than that, man, they've, they've played really well. They went on the – a year ago they weren't great on the road and – in two games this year at both Kentucky and at the uh, University of Alabama, they uh, they gave themselves a chance to win. They got after Kentucky really good, uh, played, a, a, again, a good Kentucky team, a Kentucky team that beat Ole Miss two weeks ago and also took Georgia all the way to the wire. Should have won that game, you know, one-point game against the University of Georgia. And I know what Kentucky feels going into this year. They have a really good team. So uh, Shane's done a really good job. Their staff, they've done a really good job. They've recruited at a very high level. Uh, having gone against them in South Carolina, other coaches and Shane uh, as well, that's a place that's always been able to recruit well. Uh, the Carolinas is a fantastic part of the country uh, where the, the, the kids don't usually go a, a long way away from home. Uh, they've got a lot to offer, uh, uh, both in the people that are there uh, in Columbia, and certainly they've got fantastic facilities, uh, great fan base, a very passionate fan base. They're going to show up uh, uh, every week. And uh, they've done a nice job. Uh, they've got 37 seniors, which is the most, the second most in all of college football. Uh, they've got, um, I think they have six, uh, six year players on their defense, six, six year guys. And several of them are just the backups. And, uh, but they're, they've got great experience. That's the best defense that I've seen them have since I've followed them closely. Uh, so for well over a decade, um, they're really good. Uh, they're fast. They're long. They're explosive. They're disruptive, and they're deep. And uh, and so they're playing at a really high level defensively. Again, they 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 outgained uh, Alabama uh, in Tuscaloosa. Uh, lost in overtime, twenty-seven to twenty-five. Uh, outgained them by sixty-one yards. Uh, a team that just a couple of weeks ago was the number one team in the nation, right? Weren't they? And, uh, and uh, they had four sacks, nine tackles for loss against uh, a bunch of highly regarded offensive linemen, uh, backs and tight ends. So uh, I know people were quick to, to blame and justifiably so, oh, you know, we can't block nobody, we can't run it, and we can't, we're doing this and all those things. Well, Alabama just did it too, and they got really good players. And, um, and, uh, but they've got, they're also getting production from their young players. And um, so they're doing a really good job. Now they've rushed for more yards. A year ago, they were not very good uh, on offense, very uh, uneven, uh, uh, very uh, um, um, they weren't cohesive at all a year ago, and they've improved as the year has gone on. That's what I've watched, and I've uh, I always take an opportunity to watch the people um, you know that we're going to play at different times. Uh, just take a quick sneak peek. There's a lot of quick ways to be able to do that, but. Uh, you know, they've already rushed for more yards this year than they did total for last year. So uh, they're getting, you know, they, they got, uh, you know, Rocket uh, Sanders is a really good player that they got in the portal uh, that's gotten better uh, from Arkansas. That's gotten better as the season's gone on. Um, they're, they've got good depth there at running back. And then the quarterback, you know, he can take it to the house at any point in time. He's a legit 4'4 guy. He's 6'3". He's 230 pounds. He's strong. He can run through trash. They have quarterback design plays, and then he can improvise when things break down. He makes a lot of plays on the perimeter with his eyes down the field, has created explosive plays by doing so. Um, they've recruited well, um, you know, at the at tight end, uh, at receiver. Uh, they've got some guys that can really go there. Um, they have started all five of the same offensive linemen uh, in uh, all six games of this year uh, with 179 career starts. Several of them had to get baptized a year ago, a freshman that are now playing in their second or third year. Then they've recruited well uh, in the portal uh, as well. And again, they have eight starters coming back uh, on defense. They actually, again, as a team, they didn't play great against Ole Miss, but they 
they held Ole Miss in check uh, offensively, and then again their defense did the same. Again, uh, you know, 27 points each, uh, which is really good considering those two offenses and how explosive they are. They had forced 12 uh, turnovers on defense, which ranked second in the conference uh, and 12th nationally. And uh, but they've also, you know, given up, you know, a, a bunch of turnovers and uh, are tied. I believe their eight fumbles are tied for the most uh, in the country. They've played um, overall the efficiency about middle of the pack uh, in in special teams. But um, since 21, they've blocked 16 uh, kicks, which uh, you know leads the country. And um, their their punter Kai Kroger is is averaging a, a SEC high 48 yards a punt. He's also thrown it um, over the last several years. Has completed seven out of eight uh, fakes, and uh, so it's really really talented. And then they're they're eight out of 12 in their kicking game uh, with a long of, of 46. And uh, but I really like Sellers. Um, he's a tough guy. The players uh, really follow him. Uh, he's he's playing at a, a better level uh, this week than he was, you know, at the beginning of the year. And just again, as I said, watched him get better and better as the season uh, has g- gone along. So uh, there ain't no gimmies in this conference, and certainly on the schedule, we're going to have to play well. We're going to have to play better uh, in all the areas that we've already talked about. This is a team that um, you know they're very similar to us in a lot of uh, spaces if you looked at it on paper. And, um, and uh, you know, this is a really uh, talented group because they'll be coming in here this weekend. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. That was that Coach Bell.